Political pundits completely missed the entire point of the movie Barbie, especially conservatives, with most triggered by words like patriarchy and talks about gender. This is an assault on not just Ken, but all men. This movie is not just a piece of shit. This movie is a flaming piece of dog uh, I don't need to watch Barbie to know that it's bad. Now, I may not look like it, but I'm really not Barbie's target demo. I didn't play with dolls, and I find most girl power movies kind of cringy. I love smart, strong female characters like Sarah Connor, or Clarice in Silence of the Lambs, or Phoenix from Maverick. But so often, Hollywood gets lazy and has tiny females overpowering men or eye-rolling tributes like this one from Avengers. But Barbie had people talking. We haven't seen this much social commentary on a movie since Joker, and this time, people couldn't even agree what the movie was about. So what the heck? How on earth could Barbie have been so confusing? On the surface level, it's a battle of the sexes. Here's a very quick overview. Barbie has a perfect life in Barbie land, but it starts to go wrong because the real world little girl who plays with her is having bad thoughts. Barbie heads to the real world to fix thing and Ken tags along. For Barbie, the real world is scary and sexist. For Ken, it's kinda awesome. He's treated with respect and dignity, something he's never experienced in Barbie land, ever. Excuse me, sir, do you have the time? You respect me. Barbie and her new friends are chased around by Will Ferrell, then everyone heads back to Barbie land, where the Kens have revolted to a government for the Kens, of the Kens, and by the Kens, and set up an Andrew Tate-style patriarchy. This sets up a battle of the sexes. The women manipulate the men and win, and the men go back to being schlubs. And throughout all of that, there's a lot of references going on to gender and sexism in society. But more than any other movie in recent memory, Barbie's a two-hour Rorschach test, like this obvious picture of a naked woman. If you're looking for self-empowered women fighting and beating male domination, it's here. Virtually every male, doll or human, is a dummy. There's catcalling, mansplaining, and a whole ton of patriarchy. But there's also the opposite. What do the Kens say? I love you too. I don't know. People who freak out thinking it's a feminist screed just didn't look deeply enough. Some of the feminist speeches may be cringy for conservatives, but others are meant to be laughed at. You've been making women feel bad about themselves since you were invented. You fascist. That outraged critics like Ben Shapiro, who completely missed the point. The girls' junior high level philosophy is both woke and a joke. Even Barbie saw through it. I'm a fascist. I don't control the railways or the flow of commerce. Director Greta Gerwig continually toys with the audience, sometimes showing where the world is sexist, then showing sometimes where it's not. Like when Ken reads his feminist literature and then expects the patriarchy to take care of him. No, I won't let you do just one appendectomy. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. He can't get a job as a lifeguard or even a high-powered executive. I'll take a high-level, high-paying job with influence, please. Okay, you'll need at least an MBA, and a lot of our people have PhDs. Isn't being a man enough? Actually, right now, it's kind of the opposite. Then the recruiter flips it. You guys are clearly not doing patriarchy very well. We're doing it well. Yeah, we just uh, hide it better now. And that's the rub. The gender rhetoric contradicts the real world and even itself. Ironically, Ken's character arc of being defined by society and completely defined by his relationship with Barbie is actually the film's most feminist message. The movie's gender mantras have only one thing in common. There's no consistent theme. So is it any wonder why critics fight over what that meaning actually is? So it's easy to get confused by the inconsistent gender themes, but this movie just isn't about gender. It's about embracing humanity. It's actually a retelling of the Bible's book of Genesis, at least one part. We see this clearly in Barbie's character journey. She starts in a perfect world where there's eternal youth, no pain, no death, and no self-consciousness. If that sounds familiar, you may have read it in the Bible when God created men and women. Barbie leaves her Eden, not because of banishment, but on a quest to ease the suffering of her real-world girl. Along the way, though, she discovers humanity. She cries for the first time. She feels glimpses of emotions, and in one wordless scene, Barbie observes humans being humans. They laugh, they argue, they play with each other with both joy and sadness. More and more, she questions her perfect plastic life. She even realizes how poorly she's treated Ken. I'm really sorry I took you for granted. Oh. <laughs> Not every night had to be girls' night. She apologizes and helps him discover himself as his own person, not just an appendage of her. Maybe it's time to discover who Ken is. And in the end, Barbie rejects Barbie land, even though the matriarchy has been completely restored. Instead, she chooses being human, with all of its messiness and imperfections, even with death. I want to be a part of the people that make meaning. 
not the thing that's made. It may sound a little out there, but even the director confirmed that Barbie's actually a twist on the creation story. It doesn't have the disobedience or expulsion, but it explores the same relationships that the Bible does between men and women, between God and humans. In Barbie, the stand-in for God is played by Rhea Perlman. She's an ethereal creator and playing the real-life co-founder of Mattel and inventor of Barbie, Ruth Handler. The first time we meet Ruth, Gerwig gives us a little hint as to who she might be. The scene mirrors Michelangelo's creation of Adam that appears on the Sistine Chapel. That's no accident. And neither is calling her the creator or this heavenly looking setup. Being a human can be pretty uncomfortable. Humans make things up like patriarchy and Barbie just to deal with how uncomfortable it is. That single line blows a hole in most of the conservative rants against the movie. And in case you missed the first Michelangelo reference, you get a second chance at it. Finally, when Barbie asks to become human, her creator tells her she doesn't need permission. Do you give me permission to become human? You don't need my permission. Then Barbie asks a question that many people have wondered about God. You're the creator, don't you control me? Barbie learns that she, like humans, has free will. And with that knowledge and choice, she rejects a life of superficial happiness, everlasting beauty, materialism. She chooses human connection, love, loss, even death. And then you die. <laughs> yeah. Overall, that's not too shabby for a goofy chick flick about a doll. And all the controversy helped this movie earn a billion dollars in its first month, and it made Greta Gerwig financially the most successful female director of all time. Not too shabby either. So, I'm just Ken. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And until next time. Be